A city's heart. Bridges, tree-lined trails, emerald green parks, industry and commerce. The unseen that hums below. Water, warmth, power. All made possible by one common economic threat. Tax increment financing. A vibrant and independent community pulls itself up by its bootstraps. How? By skillfully obtaining funds to fortify growth and quality of life. Bootstrapping happens with tax increment financing. Tax increment financing uh, is a way to pay for infrastructure. And the idea is that we're going to get the development itself or the uh, owners of the newly built industry or, uh, or commercial uh, buildings uh, to actually pay for the infrastructure that was required in order to allow them to locate in the community. A business pays taxes on the property it builds upon. Those taxes go into the TIF to pay for the infrastructure that the business needs. It's the TIF that really pushes you over the edge to say, we can do this, we can bring water and sewer to your site. We can buy land, turn it over to you for a dollar so you can build your building, have more equity going forward, and it's easier for you to finance your, your building in order for you to be here. TIF allows community leaders to be nimble, act quickly, to put an offer on the table and attract and expand new business. The feedback that we've always gotten here in Lafayette is how well this community works together. And it's incredible. I'm, I'm not originally from Indiana. And when I came to this community, it was remarkable to me how well people work together. And that's, that's in, in everything that's, that's accomplished in the community. And most specifically, when it comes to economic development, all hands on deck. Everyone works together to, to be able to put the packages together to attract, retain, and help companies grow. And it's been, uh, it's been a wonderful experience for us, and I know for others coming in, uh, much like our latest and uh, newest addition to the community, uh, GE Aviation. Putting together the uh, total incentive package between the state, the county, and the city, you know, TIF was a big piece of that and um, did help GE select this site as, as one of the sites to, to consider. GE Aviation and neighboring Nanshan Aluminum Company needed a truck-friendly boulevard to support their businesses. TIF transformed a sleepy county road into a beautiful thoroughfare that meets the needs of manufacturers and citizens. We also used um, TIF money to upgrade uh, what at the time it was um, County Road 350 South and now it's Veterans Memorial Parkway and that's uh, a very important connection to State Road 38 and I-65 for these manufacturers that are out there but it's also one of the main thoroughfares for the public to get in and around Lafayette. So we used the tax increment financing dollars um, to take from a two-lane county road into a four-lane boulevard and it was, has lanes landscaping, new lighting, and also trails and sidewalks along it. Purdue Research Park in West Lafayette, Indiana, supports innovation, new startup businesses, and a high-quality work environment. The community and Purdue form a symbiotic partnership. Growth here was stagnating until the TIF tool became available. The majority of growth took place after Purdue Research Park became a TIF district. With TIF funding, with that being included in a TIF district, the park has grown exponentially every year. We now employ over 4,000 people. It is the largest certified tech park in the state of Indiana. It is one of the biggest draws to this community. Rural communities do not have the number of manufacturing plants that a city has. Yet through TIF, Carroll County, Indiana attracted Indiana Packers. The county's new industrial park charmed a California food processor to locate there. Back in 1992, Indiana Packers promised us that they would bring in roughly two to 400 employees. And as today, their growth has went up to 2,100 employees working there. We needed to be able to have those TIF dollars available to actually attract them here. And the promises that were made to invest those TIF dollars back in uh, to infrastructure improvements, not only for them to, to establish themselves here, but also for future growth. And Indiana Packers is actually uh, in excess of, you know, 60, 70% of water and, water and wastewater utilities. 
the ability to uh, have enough water to supply our needs and also enough uh, proper pre-treatment and post-treatment for wastewater discharge allows us to continue operations and to expand in the future. TIF helps existing companies expand. Corporations have plants located all over the world. They can choose to expand anywhere. TIF monies help sway companies to grow in Indiana. Many of our competitors chose Mexico simply because they have a lot lower labor rates and therefore their overall cost for manufacturing could be lower. Uh, we at Subaru wanted to continue our success here in Indiana and wanted to bring over the Impreza for production here. So we went to our parent company and said if we were able to get support from the local government to help level that playing field, would it be possible to bring the Impreza here? and they agreed with us. Uh, based on the fact that we got $1.2 million in infrastructure improvements through tax increment financing, in addition to $750,000 to help train our workers, very important to level that playing field. Like Subaru, Alcoa sees the importance of continuing its success in Indiana, a driving factor in the decision to add a new aluminum lithium plant to their Lafayette facility was the community's demonstrated commitment to the manufacturer. The competition for this facility was brisk and there were multiple locations within Alcoa that wanted to land the facility. For Alcoa, it becomes a business decision as to which location to choose. And so the TIF grant was critical in that it supported the business case for us that said, you know, this will be a lower cost facility than the others. Uh, it's located in a region in a, in a county, in a state, in a city that wants to grow with Alcoa. Typically, infrastructure is equated with physical capital, but there is also human capital, the workforce. A pre-screened and trained workforce enables a new or expanded plant to be up and running faster and smarter. TIF provides funding to specifically train employees to fit the needs of manufacturers through an advanced manufacturing program. It was really the, the brainchild of a variety of people coming together uh, to, to say, what can we do to prepare the workforce? Since the program began being offered here through our corporate college, it is now spread across the state. I think it's important to note that the, that the Ivy Tech uh, training program for certified production technicians holds the students accountable for being on time, being there for every classroom session, uh, participation, uh, going through a drug screen, uh, all things that are important to an employer like Nanshan. Speaking as the uh, current board chairman for the Indiana Manufacturers Association, the access to the TIF funding is, uh, is critically important. Manufacturers across the state uh, share similar challenges in finding the skilled talent that they need for the jobs that they're adding to their organizations or as the jobs are changing in their organization. So those, uh, the access to those dollars really helps in, in upgrading the skill sets by providing that special training for individuals to fill those, those jobs across the state. And I think it's one of the things that separates us from, from a lot of states. Lafayette, Indiana transformed a blighted, dangerous apartment complex into an inviting, thriving neighborhood. Everyone was afraid. You didn't go out at night, you didn't send your children to play to the school because they sat on the playground and sold drugs. I could watch them from my home. And they were not shy about it. There were thugs and thieves roaming the streets. You didn't leave anything in your yard because it wouldn't be there the next day. And you didn't leave your cars unlocked. A team from agencies across the community leveraged TIF funds to obtain additional millions in federal grants to transform the rundown area. Today, Chatham Square, named after the Chatham family who farmed the property until the 1950s, uplifts the spirit of the long-established Glen Acres neighborhood. Well, there's no doubt that getting rid of the old Bridgeway apartments and the new Chatham Square development really was one of the transformative things we've been able to do when it really comes to neighborhood stabilization. Uh, it got rid of, quite frankly, one of the areas in town that was our highest crime rate. That crime spilled into other neighborhoods surrounding uh, the Bridgeway Apartments. And Chatham Square really took all of that and turned that back into a community. And really the surrounding neighborhoods saying, 
We want to be a part of that also. We want this to really feel like a neighborhood, like a community. It's turned out to be wonderful. It looks like it's a safe environment. It's a clean environment. There are waiting lists to get in here. And they've done exactly what they said they were going to do. They have held them to standards that no other complex does. They are drug tested. They're required to have employment. And there are occupancy limits that are adhered to. That never happened before. A city's downtown, its center and heart, hums with an energy that must be valued and cultivated. When a downtown thrives, all of a community thrives. Well, the downtown is important to the tax base because on a square foot basis, the downtown property owners pay more than any other um, area of the, um, of, the, of the county. So those taxes that are generated in the very densely populated and very densely developed area actually support the entire community. There's TIF dollars in the Renaissance place, which is a, a really neat redevelopment. Uh, of downtown and you know that's close to Reilly Plaza, the Myers Bridge, which is a really a focal piece uh, of our community and so that to me is an important piece because it also helped bring about that thought of we can do retail, we can do banking, we can do uh, upscale living a little bit higher end of, of places for people to live downtown and so you know that's a project that, that stands out for me as that's helped been a catalyst for some other things to, to take place downtown that said, you know, this, this can work. Also in downtown Lafayette, an innovative co-working studio has brought a fresh and dynamic feel to the city. Uh, we are in Matchbox co-working facility, which is a relatively new facility, um, an idea for Lafayette and really the nation as a whole. And it's basically shared office space. So what we're targeting here is these folks that um, you might see at the coffee house on their laptop or something, or they're working from their home. Uh, these are people that, that don't have an office, um, that are, you know, again, working from their home or some other spot. They can come here and have an office environment to work in, but more importantly, they can come to a place where they can collaborate with others. So there's other like-minded entrepreneurs here. Well, I think, you know, there's a lot of talent in this community. There's a lot of people with great ideas uh, that really are looking for ways to, to help bring those out and, and develop them. But we really didn't have a facility like Matchbox where that was possible here in Lafayette. And working with a lot of different groups and some really smart people, we've been able to put together a, not just a facility, because it's not just about the bricks and the mortar, it's also about the environment, about the thought process and the creativity and the willingness to say it's okay to fail. We want people to try new things because we know eventually products will be developed, companies will be developed, and Matchbox encompasses all those, a really good design uh, with the right environment. We want creative people, we want people to try new things, and so Matchbox kind of brings all that together and on top of that, it's in a nice historic building that was reused too. The result you want from TIF is, is new investment job creation, and that's what Matchbox is doing. After eight months, um, we have a company that's been a member here that has merged with a company out of Illinois, and now they're going to have their R&D facility um, here in Lafayette outside of Matchbox in, a, in an office in the downtown. So it'll be about 35 to 40 employees, engineers, software engineers, and customer service reps. We're very excited about this new economic development opportunity, these new jobs and investment that will be created right here. With foresight, planning, and synergy among leaders, tax increment financing, TIF, can transform a community, generate new business, new investment, jobs, and infrastructure, create neighborhoods and self-sufficient, productive citizens. What's unique about our community is the fact that we all work together. I mean, the, whenever we put an incentive package together for a potential company or a potential expansion, it includes Greater Lafayette Commerce, the City of Lafayette, the City of West Lafayette, Tippecanoe County, and the State of Indiana. We all work together to make sure that we're doing what's best for the citizens. It also sends a very clear message about the desire of the state, of the county, of the city to have an expansion in their area. So rather than just providing lip service, saying, we want you, you back it up with, with an economic stimulus, which is really powerful in the decision-making process. Well, I think what you have to look at when you're talking about uh, local tax increment financing or any type of local incentives, from, be it city government, county government, um, it's very important to look at the multiplier effect. How many jobs are you actually going to create by virtue of the project that you're willing to invest in? It, it's not a matter of 
risking to try and create a few jobs. It's a matter of investing to create a large number of jobs. And when you have manufacturing in particular, but actually auto manufacturing especially, it has a tremendous multiplier effect. I, I tell people a story uh, about my experience in coming to Lafayette. Uh, the first week that I was here, I, uh, at the end of the week, I drove back to Michigan to my home with a smile on my face. And my wife said, how did things go this week? And I said, you're not going to believe it. At the end of five days, I had 40 business cards. I'd met the mayor. I'd met the, the president of the Chamber of Commerce. I'd met the, the critical people from Work One. I'd met Ivy Tech leaders. Because we compete in a global economy, we need to be able to react at the speed of business. And TIF dollars allow us to do that when it comes to infrastructure, job training, the needs that businesses have to compete in a global economy. We need those TIF dollars to be able to react quickly. Their window of opportunity in the competitive market that they're in, is it becomes critical for us to have those TIF dollars to react like they have to react at the speed of business. Reacting to the speed of business, that's what tax increment financing makes possible. When civic and business leaders work together to pull on their community's bootstraps, TIF is available to transform a region and its people quickly and efficiently. Local and state economic growth and high quality of life enables leaders to compete globally through tax increment financing.